all one kråkan, då ser någon som kallar Skorik som har kommit till klass med Brambles för att talk about old movies that I found in my class while cleaning. This week's movie is Batman Forever. It's part of the Batman collection. And it's about one hour and 56 minutes long. And it starts with an intercredit sequence. And then cutting to Batman suiting up to face uh, Two-Face. And uh, Two-Face is taken hostages. And uh, Batman ends up in one of the vaults, which gets filled with acid. And he managed to escape before it, he actually gets to solve him and in this security guy. And then there's a fight between Batman and Two-Face on a badly animated CG helicopter and Two-Face managed to escape. And then some more bad CG shots of this city. Mind you though, this is an early Batman movie so the CG is not up to par. And then uh, Edward Nygma is uh, represented or presented and he works for Wayne Corp and he has this uh, device. So he presented to Bruce Wayne but there's some budget cuts and Bruce Wayne outright declines his invention which doesn't make him happy. Um, and then there's some action with the butt, bat, the butt signal, the bat signal. And Batman is lured to a roof where this doctor called uh, Dr. Meridian, a woman, she's actually crushing on Batman somewhat and is interested in him. So she actually just baited him out for the sake of it. And then cut him back, back to Edward Nigma and his machine. And he uses it on his boss and he leaves a riddle. He actually kills his boss. So this machine kind of makes people stupid and transfer all the intelligence into the other user of the machine, if that makes sense. So even later, uh, the Riddler leaves another clue at Wayne Manor, or Wayne's mansion, I guess, for Bruce to find. Uh, uh, and then later, Bruce goes to talk to Dr. Meridian, uh, as himself, as Bruce, and tries to find out the riddle but I think he more or less solved it but he needs confirmation and then they decide to go on a date on a circus where they meet up with the Graysons which is uh, Robin's uh, real family I guess and then Two-Face takes over the circus and the Graysons try to help but they end up dead so the only one that's left in the Grayson family is now well Richard Grayson later be called Robin so Bruce takes him in and uh, Bruce has a flashback to his parents dying and later Batman gets into a car chase with Two-Face and it's he uses his like a grappling hook on his car so he can go up a straight wall uh, and then Edward is thinking about joining Two-Face because he saw this whole thing on TV and uh, he's trying to come up with a, a catchy like villain name so eventually he came, comes up with the name Riddler and he uh, basically teams up with uh, Two-Face with a funny scene where actually there's love, like a flip of a coin if Edward is supposed to join Two-Face or not because it's the whole gimmick of Two-Face. So the whole idea is that uh, Two-Face robs people to get the finance to actually build this huge brain device so they can gather all the intelligence of the entire city into their own brains, which is uh, useful, I guess. Uh, and then sometime later Richard or Robin falls into the bat cave and then he steals uh, the Batmobile and he goes out to fight criminals and Batman actually catches up with him and later there is an event where Bruce actually attends Edward's uh, this convention for his new brain uh, television thing. It's, it's, it's kind of combined with the TV, so yeah. So the event that Edward is hosting is actually getting gets trashed by Two-Face and then uh, Batman, there's some bad action, there's like a, a trap and Richard Grayson grabs Batman out of it. And then some time later, Dr. Meridian and Batman meet up, there's like a love story because um, she has to choose between Batman and Bruce Wayne, I guess. And then Ridley figures out who Batman is and he breaks into the Batcave and destroys everything with these funny rubber duck kind of bombs that squeak and stuff. And then Bruce gets shot and uh, Dr. Meridian gets kidnapped and Batman and Robin teams up to go fight Two-Face and the Riddler. So Robin has a fist fight with, with Two-Face and Batman ends up in a death trap and later has to choose between saving Robin and or Dr. Meridian. But he chooses to destroy the machine itself and manage to save both the Doctor and Robin. And then um, Two-Face, there's only Two-Face left and he's like tossing his coin to if he's gonna shoot him or not and Batman tosses a whole like fistful of coins to trick Two-Face and Two-Face falls to his death and then uh, the cut to the Arkham Asylum where um, the, um, the Riddler now has been held and Dr. Verdin is there to do an interview because he is about to tell her who the Batman really is and uh, he actually is so bonkers and crazy that he thinks he is the Batman 
and the movie kind of ends with Batman and running Batman and Robin running in with like a spotlight in the background of them in slow motion and that's about the end of the movie so what do I think about this movie this movie is sort of like this hat it's uh, silly to say the least um, it's just all over the place Tommy Lee Jones the one who plays uh, Two-Face I, he, he more or less sounds like a Joker from the first movie you know he, he does a lot of weird noises and grunts and overall goofy and Jim Carrey is like the mask well in that movie he's just all over the place uh, doing his physical comedy act which is actually good I think but uh, the more I thought about it this week was that if if you look at this movie as if it was like a reflection of the old 50s Batman kind of series it all makes sense how goofy everything are or yes I should say but I don't know uh, I, I don't think I can recommend this movie to anyone today but I enjoyed some of the weird and uh, kind of you know crazy action that's going on I guess so maybe to some diehard Batman fans uh, maybe they like it so anyway thanks for listening and watching and take care